that performance falling out the ring, man? Well, man, you know, B-Hop fell victim to the same thing that uh, Nicholas Walters fell victim to. And I'm not saying that Nicholas Walters ever is going to beat Lomachenko, but that layoff hurts. And people always have no respect for the layoff. Nicholas Walters was off 11 months, and then you fight the best fight in the game, Lomachenko. You're not going to beat him. It's hard. You're not going to beat him if you fight every day. But you're definitely not going to beat him with 11 month layoff. So how can you been off 25 months and you come back and fight a strong dude that's in you 51 years old? You got to remember, most baseball pitchers, where do we see the decline in them at between the off season and the next season? An older fighter can't take off that home of being completely inactive, then come back. That's why they say, why you always play basketball? Because I know as long as I fight, I got to keep my body active or I'll completely die. Not that we as sharp as nothing as we, what we were back then, but the more time we take off, the more our bodies decline. That's why I try not to stop anymore. Because I you know when you stop, your body takes that decline. Once the decline comes about, it's kind of over for you. You know, this is the way a lot of fighters went out for the longest time. This is how great fighters that's ended their you, that's, that's what we do. I mean, it, it's nothing wrong with that. That's how you do it. I just hate that you had to have such a long layoff between the fight he had last and this fight because I would have rather seen him being active than go out like that because being active gives you the opportunity to go out like that. His heart is so big and he's so challenged and he wants to fight the best that he can fight. But when you got a layoff like that, you have to take that into consideration and I don't think he took it into consideration. Yeah. Does, it, does this have to do with kind of the, the cloth you and Bernard cut? You're from that old school where of course that's how it has to end. Of course we are. That's the best way for us. That's why, the best why way. Is that? Because we are born fighters. We are Capricorns. We are born winners. We don't want to go out and come out the ring and say, oh, we could have, or we should have. No, 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 no. Take us all the way out. Or leave us alone. That's so why you're Roy Jones. You're part of his legacy. You fought him twice. Do it now. Does, does he have to retire now for sure? Would you tell him just to stop in that tent, or would you advise him? He already said he's going to stop. So I ain't got to tell him nothing. He know. What you about to say? I said you fought him twice. Mm -hmm. He's part of his legacy. Mm -hmm. and he's part of your legacy. Mm -hmm. What was it going through your mind this last fight? And I don't think he's coming back. None of them were going through my mind. I knew it was his last fight when I saw the first round. When I saw his legs, I said, no, it's over for him. Because his legs are done. Because he's been off so long that the car happened finally. Roy, you, you guys said that you, you left no son of a turn, but isn't it unfortunate we didn't get Bernard and Roy right in that sweet spot, 2002, 2003? Wasn't highly, that something on the table? Highly unfortunate, but it wasn't my reason. It wasn't my fault, I mean. I mean, so you can't say nothing about it, but of course it's highly unfavorable that we didn't get it when the time came to get it. But when he was with Don King at the time, they didn't like, they, I couldn't get a fair split with them being with Don King, so. Why, I mean, why didn't it happen? Did it come because, down to when you said 60-40, I'll no, kick your ass? No, 60-40, I'll kick your ass. I kick your ass the first time, I would have did it again at that time because I was still doing my thing, you feel me? But, you must have forgot. Something. Roy, what do you think about the Canelo Chavez talk? That's a very good fight I like to see because I think Canelo is the better fighter, but Chavez has a lot of heart and he's going to be the bigger fighter. So it's a great fight for uh, Everybody, I think it's a great fight. Are you surprised that he's going to 165 when him and Triple G can't meet at 160? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. That tells you the same thing. I've been telling you. It's always this talk about what we can't make or we can't do. No, it's not that we can't do it. It's because the money situation or some other reason that we don't do it. Not because we can't make the weight. Didn't I tell y'all last time? I don't like this catch weight stuff because that catch weight stuff is foolishness. How can you not fight one guy at 168, but you can fight another guy at 168? Same thing with Triple G. He could have fought Chavez Jr. at 68 but he couldn't fall one in 60. So now he can't say that, and that's why Canelo don't mind, because you can't say that about me. I fight uh, uh, Chavez Jr. at 60, but I'm not going to fight Stewart at 60. Uh, at 60. So, I mean, it's like the same thing. So you never know what their reasons are, but some of them, I think, use the weight for, uh, I guess, a marketing tool or a way to negotiate, a negotiation tool. I don't like all that, you know what I'm saying? I just like to say, if you want to fight him, fight him. You understand me? It's like, we are crazy, we are old school. We can't help it. We had to be that way to be great fighters. If we weren't crazy like that, we would not have been great fighters. Nothing against no other fighter, but that's just how it goes, okay? Maybe that's going to be a great fight. I'm glad to see a fight finally got made because it's great for both of them, especially for Triple G. Thanks, Roy, man. Thanks, Roy. Come on, Miami.